Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. This really is a favorite passage of mine from the scriptures. But we might ask ourselves, what is the prophet really trying to tell us in this moment? Ultimately, how, are we, how do we truly seek the Lord? How can we truly find God in our lives? And how do we call out to the Lord? These questions are at the heart of what the prophet is telling us to do. But how do we make all of that kind of happen? And what fortunately for us today, Paul tells us exactly what we need to do. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. So what does that mean? It means that our choices in all aspects of our life must be in accord with the gospel. The problem we run into is that most of us, if we're honest with ourselves, sort of compartmentalize our life. We have this stuff over here, that's our stuff to deal with. And this stuff over here, that's God's stuff. And we really kind of even go further of putting things kind of in boxes of how we're going to deal with them. And the majority of the boxes are over here, the things we're dealing with. We only leave a few things for God to be troubled with. Because, well, we know what we're doing. But there's a problem with that. It creates a fracture in our lives that makes it truly hard to find the Lord, to truly even try to seek him, let alone call upon him. Because the majority of our life, we have chosen to have nothing to do with God. And that creates a problem. But there is a simple solution of understanding and living out what it is that Paul is calling us to do. But as I always say, and I truly believe this, that the simplest things are the most difficult to actually accomplish. And how, what is this simple way? It's simply looking to Christ and how he chose to live out his life. And we see this most powerfully in the garden. As Jesus is preparing to be crucified. It is clear, if you really pay attention, that this is not something that Jesus wants. Father, take this cup from me. But what is Jesus' ultimate response? Not my will, but your will. And if we really unpack the gospel, we come to recognize that this is true of everything that Jesus does. Jesus makes no separation in his life of that which is his and that which is God's. In every choice that Jesus makes, he asks but that one question. What is your will for me here and now? And what we learn from Christ and what we learn from the gospel is that there cannot be any separation because the once we do, that's how we lose God in our life. Because the truth of the matter is every time we ask a question other than what is God's will, we are choosing sin. If you want to understand what sin is, really that simple. To not act in accord with the will of God. And if we're not seeking God's will, then by definition, we're acting against it. 
we're acting contrary to the gospel. We're acting contrary to how Christ lived his life. And in the life of Christ, it is clear that he sought the Lord, that he, of course, found him, and that he called upon him at all times. To live out what Paul is calling us to do then is really that simple. To simply do what Christ did. Not my will, but your will. To be willing to ask that question in every aspect of our life. What is your will for me? It's so simple, but yet at the same time, so difficult to do. May we come then to do what the prophet calls us to do. May we truly seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he is near. May we follow the advice of Paul to make that happen. May we truly conduct ourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ.